10, Romans chapter number 10, and we're going to begin reading here in verse 9, Romans chapter 10 and uh, verse 9. The Bible says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek, for the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach? except they be sent, as it is written. How beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. Lord, we're thankful for the opportunity just to come together tonight on this Sunday night. We like to think of Sunday nights as a kind of family night here as we gather together and uh, church family night, especially as we come into this last service before our planned conference on Wednesday, beginning Wednesday. And so I pray that you will help our hearts, please, uh, help our mind, uh, Lord, and um, uh, help us just to uh, kind of in a, in a relaxed moment, kind of grab the scope of what we're doing here, and then, uh, Lord, look to your perfect hand and, and, and wisdom for leadership in all of it. You have been so marvelously good to Maranatha Baptist Church. Uh, every need, these facilities, as we've mentioned even in the last few services, Lord, the faith promise commitments the, uh, through the years, just the commitment last year, and almost $200,000 uh, that appears we're, to, we're going to succeed by your graciousness and goodness. Um, Lord, we're humbled at this. We also realize that from year to year, we must be found in the place of submission to you so that your perfect will can be done in our missionary giving. And so as we come into this conference, Lord, then we ask that you'd guide us for 2024. Help us to know your perfect will. Give wisdom uh, in our commitments. Give wisdom, Lord, in the organization of our missions program and giving. And uh, Lord, we pray that we would strengthen these families that are coming to be with us and that you would use them in our midst. Help us, Lord, tonight as we look into your word to rejoice in the blessing of being able to be involved in this global, eternal work. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Uh, I often use, uh, I get hung up on this word in the Bible, I use it quite often actually, superfluous. And Paul used that word with the Corinthian believers as he talked about their love and uh, their faithfulness. And he said, it's superfluous, superfluous for me uh, to say this to you. And um, I, I, I feel that way uh, uh, just uh, pastorally trying to encourage the heart and mind of Maranatha Baptist Church. You are, most of you, if not all of you, are aware of the uh, purpose and the, uh, the hope that we have unitedly uh, in this week moving forward. Uh, it, it makes it a blessing to be able to preach to people who already understand these things. Um, and uh, really, if we could add a final message, uh, I mean pastorally, of course, before Brother Gordon comes and challenges our hearts, that you have demonstrated your love and you have demonstrated your faith and you have demonstrated your faithfulness, your sacrifice, In this area of missions and you know already that that's why the hand of God uh, has been upon this church uh, and uh, in uh, our efforts Uh, and so my heart is saying amen with you okay and uh, but we want to be careful that we don't take anything for granted we want to be careful that we don't just think because it's happened for so many years it will continue to happen Israel made that mistake of taking some things for granted, and they began to uh, backslide and uh, get out of the will of God and even rebel against God. And, and then what happened? Then chastisement upon them because 
uh, they, they got uh, too lax, too comfortable, and were, uh, lost their commitment to faithfulness to God. And so uh, I want to just uh, uh, kind of give uh, a last-minute encouragement before we come into Wednesday night as it relates to this matter of faith promise giving. Uh, there from verse 15, the Bible says, How shall they preach except they be sent? And I, I, I probably will, uh, you know, if you, if you, if you make a statement, I'll, I'll never forget, you probably will. But it's still fresh in my mind as I heard uh, Dr. Uh, Halsey say one time that there are a lot of things that go on in a world missions conference that are a blessing and encouragement. But the purpose of it is, listen, the faith promise commitment cards. That's what it's about. There are a lot of needs for missions. There's a need for manpower. Uh, we have the mandate, the, 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 the command to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. But what we're praying about and what we've been encouraging you about is, uh, are, I should say, the means to get that work done. We support missionaries through faith promise giving. That's how we do it. And faith promise giving is really uh, nothing more than asking God, Lord, what would you have me to give above and beyond my regular tithes specifically for the purpose of world evangelization? And there are a lot of uh, uh, churches that give a percentage of their general fund uh, in some way. Uh, somehow they do that. Uh, but uh, over the years, it's been proven that churches that come together and are unified uh, in praying about what God would allow them to give beyond their tithes are by far able to exceed some percentage out of their general fund uh, uh, as, a, as a whole. And so uh, that's what's happened here. I think Brother Coffey has told the account before about having uh, Dr. Halsey come and talk about faith promise in those early years, and Maranatha caught the, uh, caught the biblical instruction and caught the exhortation and said, hey, we're, uh, we're going we're gonna to do this. We want to be involved in this, and you have, uh, you have demonstrated that very well. But we send missionaries, and we don't send missionaries on good wishes. <laughs> uh, we send them by financial offering, and by faithfulness to them to provide. And Paul spoke of those of the Philippian church that sent once and again unto his necessity in Philippians chapter number four. This is how we get the work done. How shall they preach except they be sent? And listen, it's, it's, not, um, it's not a cheap endeavor, is it? I mean, it's, it's expensive, uh, but it's a big world. <laughs> Eight billion people. You know, I used to encourage people when we were missionaries with Baptist International Missions, I'd say, you know, sometimes we have to be reminded, and I mean all of us, all of us that give to missions, all of us that are involved in mission work, we have to be reminded that when it comes time for the missionary to go, down, uh, to, go to the mission field, they don't go to the shipping company and show their missionary credentials and say, hey, I'd like a free crate to the ends of the earth. You know, that's not how that works. I hope you'll give us some free tickets, too. That's not how that works. And so the same expenses that you and I have, they have. The Bible says they that preach the gospel should live of the gospel. It's God's plan. It's God's design. And God blesses those who are involved in it. All right? And matter of fact, uh, because of the nature of many economies around the world, uh, we understand that the missionaries have greater expenses in these foreign countries than you do. I just heard of one, uh, was it Roy? Somebody, I'll get them mixed up if I mention a name, where uh, you know, a lot, in a lot of countries they sell the gas by liters instead of gallons. I'm talking about the gas for your car. And, and it can be six, seven, eight dollars a gallon. Uh, milk, $13 a gallon. I might have even seen one that was upwards of 20 somewhere. Those must be golden cows. <laughs> I'm not sure how that works out, but... The expenses are unbelievable. We used to tell people all those years ago, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't know what they are now, but just to relate the idea uh, that whatever expense you might have in America, it was twice as much in Japan at the time. And uh, one of the most expensive countries to live in up until things kind of went awry in Europe, and then the support, that, the support for a missionary to go into Germany just really got unbelievable at one point because of the expense to live there. Uh, and so... You know, it's a, it's a huge commitment. It's a huge responsibility. 
Uh, and uh, we have to ask ourselves and make sure that we understand why we do it. Why do we do it? And uh, to help with that, Paul, if you'll turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 8, Paul used in, as an example a church that was, by his own words, in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 2, this, these churches at Macedonia that were in a great trial of affliction, the, uh, verse 2, the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abounded unto the riches of their liberality. Here was a church, uh, to look at it from a human perspective, that uh, folks would have said, you know what, I don't want them giving anything to me. We need to give something to them uh, to help them. And yet they wanted to be used uh, of the Lord uh, to take part in this offering that Paul was receiving for the poor saints at Jerusalem. And so they committed, uh, in verse number 5 is a key verse, and this they did not as we'd hoped, but first gave their own selves to the Lord and unto us by the will of God. They gave themselves to the Lord. They gave themselves to the, to the need. They gave themselves to Paul and to his group and to those to whom they would minister. And God used them miraculously above and beyond what uh, you might think they would be able to do uh, because they gave themselves to him. And uh, they realized when uh, in a situation where, uh, you, you know, it could have been said that somebody should have given to help them. They said, no, 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 we want to give to help others. We, uh, we want to be involved in this way, reminding us that anyone can be used of the Lord if they will give themselves to the Lord. It doesn't matter your status in life. It doesn't matter uh, whatever status you might be in. If you'll yield yourself to God, God can and God will use you to accomplish his purpose in the world. If he can use these Macedonian churches, he can use you. And we trust that he will. And, and so uh, you all being familiar with this and knowing this, I just want to exhort you uh, with Paul's exhortation, as I said uh, a little bit ago, uh, to, to keep close to our heart the heart of the matter. Um, this giving is far beyond a bank book. It goes far beyond the bank book. It goes far beyond calculations. It's a matter of the heart. And we are exhorted with, uh, 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 with here uh, these principles that help our heart uh, to continue to be encouraged and strengthened in the work. He, he tells us how we should give this offering, and that's what I want to focus on tonight. How should we give? Every night when we talk about faith promise, and then on Sunday when we receive the commitments, well, what should be on our heart as we, uh, as we do this? Well, he tells us, first of all, that we need to give uh, with a right attitude. We've got to have a right attitude about it. And here are the two attitudes we should have. One is an attitude of willingness. Willingness. You see that there in uh, verse number 8 when he says, I speak not by commandment, but by occasion of the forwardness of others and to prove the sincerity of your love. I speak not by uh, commandment. Of course, there's much in the Bible that we're commanded to do. We are commanded to study. We're commanded to pray. We're commanded to witness, we're commanded to be in church, we're commanded to live holy lives, but this offering uh, is not commanded. You have an opportunity, of course, to exercise your will of choice toward God and His work. And so we're to have this attitude of willingness, completely voluntarily. You don't have to turn in a faith promise commitment card if you don't uh, feel so inclined. And somebody would say, preacher, I can't even believe you'd say that. Well, God said it. This is not a command. Matter of fact, on the faith promise card itself, it, uh, it's anonymous. There's no place for your name. And we're not going to bill you. Uh, we're not going to come to your house okay, and say, where is it? That's not going to happen. This is completely between you and the Lord. And that's a wonderful thing. The liberality of it. 
the ability of the individual, the ability of the families to come together and just know God's will and do it, is able to perform uh, far and away more than the command of law alone, if you will. It's completely voluntary. It's a spiritual offering uh, that is only a blessing as it's done out of a heart uh, that is overflowing with willingness and concern for others. And the Macedonians had this willingness in verse number 3, for to their power I bear record, yea, and beyond their power, look, they were willing of themselves. They weren't forced. This is the same way that the Israelites gave uh, for the building of the temple in 1 Chronicles 29. Uh, and in verse 9 there of 1 Chronicles 29, the Bible says, as they received this offering, then the people rejoiced for that they offered willingly because with perfect heart they offered willingly to the Lord. And David the king also rejoiced with great joy. What was the joy of it? The freedom of it. To express uh, their individual uh, and familial heart toward God. That's what brought the joy. They were not pressured in any human way. Especially as it relates to the Macedonian believers here uh, as well. The only constraint they had was the love of Christ and the love of the brethren and the pressing need that was before them so that they were willing of themselves to give. And they were eager to have a part in the offering. Um, if you look verse 4, Paul said they were, that uh, they, were, they prayed him, praying us with much entreaty that we would receive the gift. Uh, it's almost as if uh, uh, their commitment was, was such that Paul indeed said, hey, whoa, wait a minute here. Wait, whoa. You have needs yourself. You have problems yourself. You have afflictions yourself. But they said nothing to him. Um, you ever had someone seek to give you something or help you in some way and, and you're a little bit resistant maybe, because not because of any other reason that you're concerned for the one that's trying to help you? And then they'll come back at you and say, don't you rob me of my blessing. You ever had, that's, what the, that's what these Macedonian believers were saying. Don't rob us of our blessing to be involved in this what you're doing. Years ago in a mission conference in Washington State, uh, one of the uh, ladies there, she was a Korean lady, and she, she, what she would do every year for the conference, she would vacate her house and go live with a friend. And she would turn her house over to the missionaries to live in for the week. And uh, we got there, uh, and one of the things about Korean hospitality is food. Lots of food. There was the refrigerator was packed to the brim, and uh, every room had uh, food in it. Uh, and uh, here's what she said. She took us to the kitchen when we got there, and, and she opened the refrigerator, and there wasn't a space left. You ever refrigerator ever been in a case where if you put anything else in there, something's falling out? That's, what, that's the way this was. And here's what she said to us. She said, you know eat this? God no bless me. <laughs> we did our best to make sure she had all the blessings she could. But when we left there, brother, we fasted for two days. Amen. And I wouldn't even call it a fast because she took care of us so well. Uh, that was the attitude these Macedonians had. They prayed them with much entreaty. We want you to have this. We want to be used in this way. They were eager to have a part in this offering. Uh, and uh, we're reminded here, of course, of the Lord's words in uh, chapter 9, uh, that God loves a cheerful giver. And so the Macedonians had this willingness. And you and I, we hope, would have this same willingness to be involved. And again, we alluded to this on uh, last Sunday as we started trying to encourage our hearts toward this end, that we just want to be in the place where we are willing to do however God might lead us. Where God would have us to go, what God would have us to give. We want to say, uh, like Samuel, speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. That's the attitude we should have. It's a matter to be dealt with in every person's heart. I can't tell you how much to give. You know, I've had people sometimes over the years uh, to say, uh, can you give me any pointers? <laughs> pray, pray. God will lead you. I can't tell you. Uh, you may not want the preacher to tell you anyway. <laughs> You're going to want to be sure that God tells you. 
to, to seek you know, the guidance of anyone but the Lord would kind of put things on a human plane. And we're trying to keep this given on a divine plane. Um, and so I have not uh, spoken to Brother Gordon in any way to direct his preaching. I don't do that with any speaker that comes here. Um, but over the years as a missionary, I've heard a number of comments uh, in messages that kind of cause me to say, wait a minute here, what are we trying to do? We want to be sure to keep the thing on a divine plane. I've heard the statement, your faith promise should be more than your tithe. That sounds good, doesn't it? But that's not necessarily true. We want your faith promise to be what God says, no matter what that amount might be. Somebody has said your faith promise should be more than any bill you pay each month. And, you know, you got to think to yourself, you know, where do these people come up with this stuff? Uh, how, how, <laughs> what calculator did you use? How did you determine it? Um, and then, you know, that's on the high end of things. Then, of course, on the low end, that really doesn't challenge anybody. If you just give five more dollars a week, well, that doesn't take a whole lot of faith to do that. I mean, generally speaking, uh, if you eat, a, uh, if you eat a, 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 a Big Mac a week, you can just uh, stop that and take care of that. Um, and even if you just give two dollars more a week, uh, look. We ought to be determined to do exactly what God says do. Now, most of you tonight can say that when you got involved in this matter of faith promise, you started at a certain level, and by God's grace, he has increased your faith over the years. Matter of fact, your spiritual growth and your understanding of the, uh, uh, of the urgency of the matter, your commitment to uh, spiritual investment has led you to increase your giving from year to year. And that would be a common testimony uh, as you get involved. And maybe at some point, it, your giving does cross the threshold of being more than your tithe. Or it does cross the threshold of being more than any bill you pay per month. But we shouldn't use those as calculations. We should just simply stay yielded to God and God will have his will accomplished. And so God, remember, God doesn't need money, he needs people. He just needs us to be completely yielded into his hand. And so uh, as we do so, God will guide us. Now, it's true that God will seek to strengthen our faith. Uh, he will challenge us in some areas as, as it relates to our understanding of the need, excuse me, of world evangelization. It is more important than a lot of other things we spend our money on. So uh, there may even be the challenge, hey, if, uh, if reaching people for Christ is more important than... Uh, let me use my own uh, Cherry Coke Zero. Then maybe I don't want to do so much Cherry Coke Zero. So I can do more for missions, you see. We, be challenged, we will, of course, and should be challenged along those lines. But every individual has a walk with God. Every family has a walk with God. And they're to do as God leads them. And so we need to come into this thing with an attitude of willingness. And I think to some degree that's already in uh, this, in this environment, and I say this environment is a church, uh, it's already in this environment. I can tell that you're already looking forward to having the missionaries with us. I can tell just from tonight's penny offering, there's an enthusiasm there, and uh, you're excited about what God's going to do in these uh, days ahead. But we want to be sure as God begins to challenge us that we stay willing before Him. You know, it may be that God would speak. Uh, I remember the illustration of uh, given many times, I've heard it given many times, of uh, an offering being received for, for the work of world evangelization, and uh, a, a little uh, lady received the offering plate as it was being passed, and she put the offering a plate on the floor and stood in it and said, I don't have anything to give but myself. And so she gave herself, I'm, I'm reminded of the apostle saying, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have. <laughs> In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise and walk. Amen. Uh, we, it's, uh, sometimes it's about uh, the willingness of our heart on many levels with the Lord. And so we want to give with an attitude of willingness, and then we want to give with an attitude of worship. All of our offering is an act of worship to God. 
And you see in 2 Corinthians chapter number 8 and verse 8, he says, I speak not by commandment, but by occasion of the forwardness of others and to prove the sincerity of your love. That's worship. That's worship. Giving to God proves that we mean what we say when we say we love him. And this demonstration of love by giving was first, of course, uh, uh, um, exemplified uh, and personified in the work of our Savior. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Love always gives. A love for God, a love for souls, a love for the gospel. Even in this week's memo, it's one of the reasons why I, I wanted to try to include that verse as a reminder that the Lord said, freely you've received, freely give. We have received because of God's love and is our responsibility as good stewards to do all that we can by God's grace to love others enough to get the gospel uh, to them. Again, he illustrates this in our Savior uh, in verse 9. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that ye through his poverty might be rich. And so he tells them here uh, that uh, they should give with an attitude uh, of uh, willingness. And they should give with an attitude of worship as an expression of our love. But then we should give, finally, because it is good for us. Uh, we don't have time in this message to discuss every level of that goodness. But if you look at verse number 10, and herein I give my advice, watch, for this is expedient for you who have begun before not only to do but also to be forward a year ago. This is good for you. For us to be involved in a significant way financially in world evangelization is good for us. You know, Paul, uh, when, uh, when uh, Brother Harper preached a couple weeks ago on the faith promise promise, and he, 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 he emphasized rightly so, uh, chapter 4 and verse number 19, my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. It is good for us. If you do and give in obedience to God, God will make sure that you are taken care of. And I always want to give a caution as we you know, make those statements because there, there are illustrations in the Bible of people that gave with some ulterior motive, um, like Ananias and Sapphira. They gave to be seen. They gave out of a, they gave out of a sense of competition with the brethren. They, they wanted to do as much as Barnabas. They saw what the Lord had done through Barnabas, and so they had this carnal motive then. And I'm just, I'm just going to tell you, I think sometimes that carnal motive is what gets written down on faith promise cards. Uh, there's something about us that likes shock and awe. <laughs> and I... Uh, uh, I, I, would, I, I would be uh, terribly burdened to think that somebody would write something on a faith promise card uh, that would cause gasps in the auditorium at the amount. And I'm talking about that as their motive. Now, I'm not talking about, you know, um, we need to be careful of that kind of thing. But here's the point. When we give what God wants us to give, God will take care of us all along the way, every step. My God uh, is able to make all grace abound toward you. Uh, matter of fact, look at it at uh, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 7. 2 Corinthians 9 and 7. Every man according as he purposeth in his heart. And that purpose, of course, is between him and God. So let him give, not grudgingly, or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. Notice he's saying, again, just re reiterating what we've already said. You don't want to give and say, oh, I guess I have to do this. Or they made this in such a way of necessity. They made me do this. 
That's not the reason to give. Uh, not grudging over necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. And back of that cheerfulness is the attitudes of willingness and worship. And so he says, what happens when they do? Verse 8, and God is able to make all grace abound toward you that ye always having all sufficiency in all things, look, may abound to every good work. As it is written, he that dispersed abroad, he, uh, 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 he hath distur- uh, dispersed abroad, he hath given to the poor, his righteousness remaineth forever. Now he that ministereth seed to the sower, both minister bread for your food. Isn't that what we're doing? We're ministering seed to the sower. We're taking care of the sower. They that the preach the gospel, should live the gospel, uh, the gospel. How shall they preach except they be sent? All right. Now he that ministers seed to the sower, both minister bread for your food and multiply your seed sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness, being enriched in everything to all bountifulness, which causeth through us thanksgiving to God. Uh, you've heard people say, you cannot outgive God. And that's because of verses like this, that principle's there. Um, the question is, will we give in obedience to God? That's all. And God will take care of the rest. Amen. Let's stand together and bow our heads for prayer, please.